Hey guys, it's Mike from 24 Hour Solar Power. Just want to say thank you. I really appreciate supporting the channel. And remember, if you do get any value out of this or think someone else can benefit from it, if you could like and share the video, I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Today we're talking about standalone solar systems versus hybrid solar systems. So the way I like to think about it, and hopefully this helps you understand, is the difference between a standalone and a hybrid system is what is your backup source? If you have a grid backup, you can get away with using a hybrid inverter system. If you don't have the grid, you're going to be using a generator as your backup. So let's get into it and talk through the differences. We'll start today. We're talking about a the standalone system. So a standalone system is exactly that's designed to stand alone all by itself and supply your power needs. This is a cheeky little 3 kVA, a Victron inverter off-grid system. So with an AC coupled inverter, so it's technically a grid connected inverter that the Victron becomes a grid to power this inverter up. And it's got 4.2 kilowatt of the SunPower Maxian panels on the roof there. And this is a little 5 kVA Victron standalone system. Same thing, we've got a 5 kVA for an inverter with an AC coupled grid connect inverter and 5.8 kilowatts of SunPower commercial panels there on that one. Now backup sources. Now let's talk about generators. Now if you're living on a farm, it's a real standalone system. Picking the right generator for your situation these are a lot of the questions we ask all the time. What is the right size generator? I pretty much like to think about what's the right size generator is. Can it charge the batteries flat out and run whatever load you want to run at that same time? That's pretty much how I think about sizing your generator. What is the best fuel type? The way I think about that there is if you're a farmer and you've got lots of diesel floating around, I'd recommend probably go more of a diesel. They're quieter. They do cost more up front and most diesel generators are a bigger, more reliable system. So it's really about what fuel types you've got. If you know you don't have lots of tractors, you don't use a lot of diesel, and you have a lot of petrol floating around, I'd probably more look at a petrol generator. The petrol generators are cheaper and a lot more easy accessible. They are a little bit noisier, so you might want to build a bit of a shed. You can actually pick up cool room paneling secondhand and build a little cool room panel box for it to really help the uh, generator reduce that noise. And one thing if you do build a box, it's really important that you vent it and make sure the exhaust gases can get out and also you can get clean air from the outside in. It doesn't suffocate itself. Um, auto start to functionality. Most generators these days come with a two wire auto start. Make sure it's compatible with the solar system. That just basically means that if you're using a big load or your batteries are flat, the generator can automatically start, charge your batteries up. You don't require to think about it. If it hasn't got an auto start, it's going to require to go outside and turn the generator on. Now things to consider is the noise. The reason I like to size the system that can charge the batteries flat out as fast as possible. I like to normally design a system that's going to charge the batteries in about two to three hours from dead flat to full. It's also one of those things as well. I'm not a big fan of actually charging your batteries full from a generator. It's best just to get enough energy in there to get you through the night. So the next morning when the sun comes up, you can take advantage of the, of the sun. There's no use spending all that money on fuel, charging your batteries full, the sun comes out the next day and your panels turn off because your batteries are full. So just something to consider and think about. But yeah, the noise, the faster the batteries can charge, the less it runs. Maintenance, how often you require to maintain your generator and a service agent. Is there someone around the area that can service the generator? If you're not handy and can't do your oil filters and the air filters and stuff like that yourself, you're gonna want someone to service it. And also in a lot of rural areas, guys won't touch cheap stuff brought on eBay or online. Just make sure you've got something that your local guy can service for you with the generator backup. Now hybrid, now this is pretty much a hybrid inverter. So you've got the grid available, a lot of hybrid inverters will not take the generator as a backup. So in these situations here, just talk through these. These are two different types of hybrid inverters. This, the Tesla setup sort of the best one to understand as an AC coupled inverter. You know, if you get a, someone coming in your house or talking about selling your batteries and they say, look, any, your inverter's battery ready, most are like it's battery ready from using an AC coupled system like this Tesla, which basically means you can put the battery anywhere and buying this product here, which these are a couple of thousand dollars basically, this makes any inverter battery ready. So in this situation here, 
If you think about this solar inverter, it's one of our favorites to use. You could use any inverter to make this system work. It just wants, the Tesla just wants solar panels and this box here, the gateway, is what makes everything work and makes any inverter battery ready. The real difference between a good quality inverter and a cheap inverter is the good quality inverters, you can, they can actually ramp them down. If you're only using, like when the grid's failed and you're only using 500 watts and your batteries are full, what happens is the Tesla can ramp these inverters down to only do the 500 watts and they're really controllable. Where in a situation where a cheap inverter, so if you have a cheap inverter that's mounted to your house and you add a Tesla to it, the Tesla actually would turn it off. So it gets shut down, you start discharging from batteries, then the other inverter says, okay, there's some load coming out of the batteries, let's charge it back up, it turns on and off and just goes on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. So it's really an ugly way of doing it. Where high quality inverters like SolarEdge, ABB, Fronius and things like that, they can completely be controlled in a microgrid situation and ramp the inverter up and down and use exactly the amount of energy that the house needs. So it's not turning on and off and going from batteries, from inverter, from batteries, inverter. It's really controlled. It's really nice to watch one of these inverters that can be controlled by ramping up. Now these other inverters are hybrid is what's more called a DC coupled inverter. So for example, this Redback, an Australian company, I love this product. You can buy this inverter in just the top part and these are the batteries down below. This is what's called DC coupled. So this is AC coupled, this is DC coupled. So in this system here, your solar panels come down and go directly and charge the batteries and then go out and run your house. Where in this system here, it comes DC from the panels into the inverter, it turns into AC, the tester sends it over here back to AC, then the tester turns it back into DC and charges the batteries. Then converts it back from DC to AC to run your house for night. So a lot of conversions here. Tesla do say they're about 10% were 90% efficient, so about 10% losses. And we've got a few testers that we're monitoring, and they're actually a lot better than that. So they're actually not too bad is basically the reality and the conversion losses. These are more efficient. The benefit of DC coupling as well is if there's a blackout and your batteries are flat, and you've got no power, and the sun comes up the next day, if the grid is still failed, with these red back units, they will charge the batteries to get enough energy in the batteries and then turn the inverter back on. Where in this situation here with a Tesla, if it is a blackout and the batteries go flat and the grid's not available, you will not turn on until the grid comes available again. So something to consider, remember, and with these, you cannot shove a generator into them. So you avoid your warranty if you shove a generator in any of these, and this is why they can't be used in off-grid situation. Well, they can be used in off-grid situation. Both these products, your warranty is void, and also you just don't have that backup source. So you have no backup if they're... You know, you could use these. I've been to a couple of sites before they have tester backups and uh, yeah, not good uh, to be using that off-grid situation. This is what they call black start, this DC coupled. And with these units, they're required to pretty much be inverter here, batteries at the bottom, really close to each other. They can't be like this one here. This is about 15 meters, the Tesla from this here, because it's all AC coupled. It's just an AC line that runs through the roof of the house. And this sits over here in the carport. Um, yeah, so a hybrid inverter is really using the grid as a backup. And the reality is if there is a blackout and the grid doesn't work, you're pretty much a few hours behind everyone else losing power is the reality, unless the sun comes back out and shines. And the other question that we get a lot is with hybrid inverters is the difference between a UPS and an EPS. The best way to think about it for you as a customer is a UPS is uninterruptible power supply. When the grid does fail, you won't have to go around and reset all your clocks. An EPS is basically an emergency power circuit. So normally there's like a 30 second or a 60 second blackout when the grid does fail. So you will use your clocks, everything will go out for a minute, white transfers over and it comes back on. That's probably the easiest way to understand it for you as a customer. So just make sure you're getting a UPS or EPS. And also as well, some EPSs, like I'll use SolarEdge for example. SolarEdge actually have their own battery backup inverter. It's classed as an EPS, emergency power supply and you don't have blackouts with lights and things like that. It all just works. So um, yeah, so that's the difference between the DC coupled with the hybrid and the, and the standalone and AC coupled. Now, if you're in a situation where you really want, you've got the grid available and you really want reliable power, you're gonna require to look at something like this, a Victron or a Selectronic, where these Victron Quattros up top here, they're called a Quattro because they've got two inputs and two outputs. So they've got four AC connections. With the Selectronics, with the Selectronics, how it works, it's a hybrid inverter to start with or a standalone off-grid. 
and you just buy another part to make a generator work with it. So it's just another contactor you buy and put in the inside of that to get the generator to work. With both these units, the Selectronics or the Victron Quattro, what happens in a grid failure is literally, if the grid's failed and your batteries are flat, there's no sun shining, it'll automatically start the generator and fire up for you. So then you've got your generator and you, you have that really reliable UPS type power where you're not gonna have a blackout. So you might want this if you've got a whole heap of food in the fridge you don't wanna lose, or you've got some sort of medical equipment that you, know, you rely on for that grid, off-grid situation. And for both these situations, compared to a normal hybrid system, you will be spending a couple of grand more to get a Quattro and a Selectronics over a normal hybrid system, but you do have the ability to have the grid as a backup and the generator all, all in one. An alternative is, I'll use the Victron or the Selectronics if, if you don't buy that generator backup input for both these, is this grid switch. So if you do have the grid available, how it basically works is one of these is the grid, one of these is the generator, when the grid does fail and you do want to go charge your batteries and back everything up, you just walk outside, you start your generator, and you walk in, you flick this switch, and it just changes the input. So this picture on here only has one input, so either the grid or the generator, and you just change it over, and then it takes whatever input you've decided to put in there. So it's a bit of a more manual process. It is cheaper. Uh, there is a lot less um, headaches there, I suppose, for customers with auto starts and generators coming on and off when you don't want to. With this here, it's completely manual. You just go change the switch if you want the generator back up or you put it back to the grid, whichever's for you. So that's basically there if you've got the, the grid and the generator as a backup, you want that real 100% reliability. Now, another main difference between a hybrid inverter and a standalone system is these toroidal transformers. So this is a big ball of copper, basically, that allows the off-grid inverter to spike. You'll see a lot of in you know, off-grid inverter, we look at the data sheet, it says it's got a 3000 kVA inverter and it's got a 6000 peak. This ball of copper is what actually makes it happen. It holds pretty much three kVA worth of energy. And when you do require that excess energy, it dumps from this here and takes about three seconds to charge it back up. So that's how it gives you that peak spike. And that's the real difference where a modified inverter or square wave, square sine wave is what they call them, these hybrid inverters. They pretty much use technology and MOSFETs to make all that happen. And because they don't have this big ball of copper to hold that extra bit of energy, they don't have that spike. So, you know, like the Redback, for example, we were talking about before, if it's a 5 kVA inverter, it's a 5 kVA inverter. It doesn't have the spike because it doesn't have this big ball of copper to help that extra capacity in a blackout situation. It uses the grid, basically. So when the grid works, and if you're pulling 4,500 watts, let's say, and you turn a kettle on, it jumps up to 7,500 watts, it'll just grab that excess energy from the grid and transfer it through, where the Victron and the Selectronics have that spike period. Um, the Selectronics has that larger spike period. The Victrons are normally double the spike, and the Selectronics is triple. And it's just the size of the ball, ball of copper uh, in the top of the inverter. So that's what's the differences between those. And you know, a true standalone solar system can take a generator where hybrid ones can't. Just remember that. It's pretty much all about what your battery, what your backup source is at the time. Which application is best? We get this question a lot. It all really depends on you as a customer is what you want in a blackout situation. If you just want, you've got the grid available, you're okay if there is a blackout to not have power for a couple of hours. A hybrid system is probably gonna work out from more of a financial point of view. Uh, the other thing to consider if you do have long periods of blackout, you know, it doesn't take much to lose a couple of thousand dollars worth of food if you have a blackout for a few days to really make it worthwhile to put in, you know, a proper, standalone solar system to have that generator input. So it's all gonna come down to you as a customer, what your situation, what's gonna be the best solution for you. Do you really want the ability to have a generator to start? Or if there is a blackout and it's rained for a couple of days, you're okay with it. And like I said, the other option is, you can actually just have a um, that changeover switch, this here, that literally, if there is a blackout, and you've got a hybrid inverter, you just go flick it over and you turn your generator on run your house you just will not be able to charge your batteries until the sun comes back out that's the basic difference so i hope this has been helpful guys with a real understanding and i suppose the key takeaway from a hybrid versus a standalone solar system is what is your backup source and do you really want a generator the ability to run a generator it's going to cost you it doesn't matter which way you look at it a couple of thousand dollars more in a design to go with a proper generator backup standalone system than a hybrid system so something to consider and think about 
Um, and thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also don't, don't forget to subscribe so you get all our updated videos. Thanks guys and have a great day.